Right, I'm here with Al Siesta. We're in Riga. We're just at the press conference for Bradis versus Usyk. Um, there's a real buzz around Riga ever since I got. I was talking to people. I was talking to the guy in the Ibis Hotel this morning. Um, he's a real superstar here. Um, a lot of the hard work's done now. What's, what are you You're feeling? You're talking Irish superstar, or the guy you've been talking to in Ibis Hotel? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe one day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe he was inspired by Marys Bradis. Mm -hmm. But um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? This is this is a huge fight. I'm feeling very well, man. Yeah. I'm feeling very positive uh, since I came here three days ago. I didn't get much sleep. No. My voice is a little bit... <clears throat> but I'm good. But we're good. I'm very positive. I can sense something. I see Yusik maybe a little bit nervous. Maybe he realizes that British is, is a prince. Okay. He can see the prince on the mission. Man comes from darkness and going into our normal territory. Mm. Good. Well, um, last interview we did, you said Usyk's in for a hell of a lot of trouble. Are you still, are you still of that mindset? No, I'm just trying to do self-counseling. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. No, Usyk is a perfect guy. I mean, he is very talented. He doesn't need corner man. I reckon he can box himself. All he needs is just water and stuff in the corner. One of those fights as well. Bregis is very special too. Yeah. So this is really a great clash. And uh, I can't see... No, I can't wait to see what's going to happen because I can't predict what's going to happen. But I don't want to be in Nostradamus right now because there's too many around. Yeah. No one gives Bregis a single chance. Really deep in their hearts, they think that Yusuf is a firmest favorite. What sort of fight do you think this is going to be? Do you think this is going to be a war? Do you think it's going to be a tactical fight? Or? The beauty of Bridges, do you know what the beauty of Bridges is? No, he went from one Bridges and there's a different one to his up. Okay. The beauty of Bridges. And um, sometimes I wish I had three faces to be in the three different places. Three different places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what it is with Bridges. Uh -huh. You never know what kind of Bridges, but I know what we worked on in the training camp. And if that's the greatest that yeah. I know was there when we left Benidorm, this could be a I very special night for Bredis and Latvia. Should be, yes, should be, but we don't know what Yusik been doing. No. I, I, I don't think it will be the same Yusik it was with Marco Huck or anybody else. It will be a very special Yusik. You think we're going to get the best? We're going to get the best out of both. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. I can't wait for this fight. Yeah, awesome. we'll a real buzz fashion. around the city. Phenomenal. It's great. Um, well, let's talk about your your journey with Bradis. Um, you, you tell us about how you first came into contact, how you first started managing him, because he was managed by Kathy Duver originally. I don't know. I never heard about Kathy Duver managing Bradis. I'll tell you honestly. I heard something that they had some sort of agreement about sparring Kovalev. Well, I did, a, I did and, an interview um, with her uh, years ago. Well, with Kathy Dewey, yeah. Yeah, and she said, oh, we've signed. And she mentioned to me, it was a sort of first... I'd love like, to see the contract. Yeah, well, she, <laughs> she um, said she'd mm. signed Maris Bradis, and then we didn't see any work between no, Bradis no, no, and this is, this is, main events. That's what I heard. He said, I signed something about sparring partnership and performances in the territory of the United States until January 2017 or something. They're very loose contract. Yeah, though. very loose. And I said, can I see it? He said, I don't really know. I don't really have a copy on the email. So that was good enough for me because he mentioned state and I'm working in Europe mostly. Yes. So I thought, really, let me work. But that came much later. I got his number from a friend of mine. And uh, I called Briggs and I said, do you know any Latvian heavyweight that I can take to Chechnya to fight Manuel Char? He goes, Manuel Char. I might have some for you. I said, okay. He said, can I give you a call? It's a minute. I said, no. So he calls me back and saying, I've got perfect up on It's me. I'm saying, right, okay, I'm serious. But I'm like, no, seriously, I want to fight Char and um, I've got a big chance. Why don't you want to call my trainer and speak to him? So I called this trainer at the time. I had a chat and we decided to take the fight. So and from then, everything is history. Yeah, so well, that fight, that was like an eight rounder. It was I eight, think eight round, was the opponent. And uh, the heavyweight, 100% opponent, and um, Manuel Cha sat me down in the cafeteria in Chechnya in the Grozny Hotel. And he said, Al, I've been asking for the opponent. Why you bring the chicken to me? That's what he said to really? me. Honestly, I'm not lying to you. But, but then, 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 well. when, then when they spoke, um, 
Charles said to me, I won't turn around because your kid is quite good on his feet. I don't really want him to run around and then get the decision okay. in Chechnya. And when I said to uh, Maurice's trainer at the time, Vasily, I said, Dad, Vasily. I'm saying this uncle Vasily is called his old man in his 70s. I said, they ask him for 10 rounds. He goes, oh yeah, I can guarantee you no one will hear, especially my new old child, he's gone. He said, he will not hear it physically. <laughs> Yeah, I said, why is that? Because he's getting knocked out. I swear, that's what he said. Well, that's what actually and, and that's ended exactly up happening. What happened. Yeah, yeah put, him, put him really to sleep. So, obviously, he went up to heavyweight and then came back down to... Mario's done that a few times. He won heavyweight tournaments, bigger, better, twice. He fought a cruiserweight, heavyweight, fluctuates. He got, he's got no fear like that. He sparred with both bridge goals. He had, he, he's, he's been like a sparring partner for many prolific right. fighters. Yeah, I've seen the pictures of him with Vitaly and stuff like that. Vitaly so, found it really hard with him and Vitaly was the one who spoke to Alex Krasik and said we need to sign this kid, but I don't think they made the right deal. Yeah. But he, God. he's not the biggest cruiserweight, is no, he? He's, so, he's an ordinary sized cruiserweight. He's strong, but he's, 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 he's a cruiserweight, but not big cruiserweight. If you know what I mean. Okay, well, uh, talking about this World Boxing Super Series tournament, um, very ambitious. What's, what's your thoughts on how it's gone so far? It's great. I think I, th I think I I feel for them in terms of organisation and logistics hmm. because it's incredibly hard. They're running eight shows on the trot and opponents falling through and sanctioning fees and governing bodies, matchmakers. Flights, hotels, tickets, prima donna this, prima donna that. I've been a prime also for a couple of One years. Show, yeah. having a nightmare. Yeah. This is eight on the trot. Well, in this situation, I can tell you, I'm impressed. It's incredible. The yeah. guys, how they pull it off, I don't know. Well, I've, I was talking to some members of the team of yeah. the World Boxing Super Series, um, and they were very complimentary of you and said you've had a, a big part to play, especially in Riga. This is the second Thank fight very much. of this tournament we've had here. So, so how much, you know, they. I'm a workaholic. It's easy for me. I'm a workaholic. I'm boxing 24 7. I mean, honestly, I mean, my children. Uh, they fully recognize box record about stars. They say, Daddy, look at him, he's got negative record. And, he's no stars in <laughs> and they're only eight years old, they know all about this. So, You're um, grooming them to Yeah, be. I mean, I mean the, the little matchmakers, they're already, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're eight and a half years old, twins, twin boys, and they just love boxing as well, and Papa this, and we're watching it together. Brilliant. Boxing is my life, yeah. and, and it's a pleasure for me. And when you're getting paid for it as well, it's just God's blessing. Yeah, well, let's talk yeah. about, like, Riga, so this is your fourth sort of event? I know this isn't your personal yeah. event, but you've been involved in quite a few yeah, events. Yeah, it's a, four, it's a four big events. This is the biggest event. Yeah. The first event we've done was about 3,500, then it was 5,700, then it's 11,000, I believe. This one, I don't know how many people we will get because the prices of the tickets are on an American Las Vegas level. Yeah, but, okay, uh, it's yeah. still the most we sold out. So. Yeah. How 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 many seats are in the Riga Arena? Ten thousand, eleven, maybe twelve thousand. Oh really? Depends yeah. what organisers allow. And I heard 80 percent of the ladies on that. Well, there's shows in England, and they, you know, there's been world title fights. Um, come to think that, like Liam Smith, he was in a world title fight. There are only a couple of thousand people there. So yeah. to come to a, a nation like Latvia, where there's been, well, of recently, I know in Soviet times there was some good fighters, but. Recently, there's been nobody apart from Bradis. No, uh, in the most Bradis is years. a true Soviet fighter as well, but Latvians might want to appreciate saying it. So I say he's a true Latvian fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's very um, sort of proud. There's of a lot of tricks hidden in the Soviet boxing school because Cubans and Russians are yes. very close yeah. in their school, and the movement and agility and salsa and changing directions, what Lomo doing and yeah, 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 yeah. this is all Soviet tricks. Wow. Because there's a cliche about all oh, upright Soviet fighters. No, no, no. This is a great excuse to diminish someone. Yes, of look course. Up, look at the got uh, four other Latvian fighters on the card. Yeah. So uh, we've got I'm Richard Balotnik, who's a good friend of ours, decent cruiserweight, up and coming young guy. Uh, Andrei Pokumeko. Okay. Yeah, who's fighting Yuan Kongolo. Yeah. The WBC International Silver light heavyweight title, great fight. Andre been winning, he won his nine last fights, I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then we've got uh, Yevgeny Alexeyev, uh, talented guy, don't really know much about him. Every every time, every 
fight I saw him knock someone out. Oh really? Well, that'll, be, that'll be yeah, interesting. That man. will be very interesting. And I've got Nicholas Grishunin, who is one of the most outstanding Latvian amateurs of all time. Oh really? So, yeah, he fought Yusik twice in European Championships and he lost by narrow, narrow margins. Oh wow, I yeah. don't know anything about this guy. I've been he, looking he, forward he, to watching him. He had a pro debut, I think he's got seven wins and one draw. He's mm -hmm. eight to no. Let's see how they all continue with their career. Mm. They've so, got incredible, apologizing opportunity to fight on the biggest card. Yeah, well yeah, it's a huge opportunity. So Crazy. That, that Crazy. What I wanted to find out is sort of uh, where Bradis was in the, um, the the documentary on ITV. Yeah. He was quoted as saying um, he's inspiring a whole new generation of young Latvian fighters. Um, you obviously know uh, the gyms and that around the around the country. Yeah, Are you seeing any evidence of? of Maris Bradis' influence already on, on the, young the, children? There are some guys, but Latvian school was very good, boxing school always was very good, I mean, during Soviet times especially. And then when the collapse of Soviet Union happened, obviously restructuring of the country and um, changing their identity from communist state to yes, capitalist, yeah. Not one cares about sport much all the time, you know what I mean? People, well, it's people, a hard people, transition, isn't people, it? Yeah, people yeah. looking for something to eat, you know? <clears throat> so. But now, definitely picking up. They're, up They're very strong on MMA. Great, yes. great judo, basketball, obviously, primary yeah. sport. But boxing, man, with Brady's boxing is booming. Well, that's and an there are loads of gyms. Of I, w I wanna big up Vadim Milov and Eugene Sapranenko for doing a great job for LNK, LNK, they call them. Uh, great gym in um, Riga. Okay. They are supporting Latvian boxing single-handedly at the moment. Guys, oh, wow. big respect to you. So those Love guys you. are... A big part of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was talking to <coughs> some Latvians this morning, just walking around, sort of socialising, um, and I wasn't aware that Latvia has a couple of uh, there are a couple of Latvian guys in the NFL and the M NBA. NBA. So that that's a huge market. Huge. He's but New York, New York is Knicks. bigger than those guys. He's bigger. Than He's them. a bigger name than those guys. Myris Bradis is number one. Yeah, but so it's not it's He's not like number one sportsman in Latvia. Full stop. So, so there's competition for that number one sportsman spot. It's and, it. you know, the the NFL or the NBA and the NHL. Is it the hockey? They have players in NHS. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's quite an achievement in itself. You've got people playing in, um, so, you know, leagues that are, are bigger than boxing. You would say like the NF, you know, those American NBA, NBA, yeah, and NBA. Uh, NHL. Um, that's that's a huge achievement for Bradis to still be bigger than those people. It's not like Bradis is the only Latvian athlete. No, no, no. no, no so when you first should, came to I mean, Riga, did you see real potential in this? I saw massive potential when I came to Riga, but I had lots of trouble here with um, some people, which became irrelevant completely because I'm one. Yeah? Yeah, I'm telling you, that's it. I told them what I'm going to do. They, they said to me, you're dreaming, this is nonsense. Latvia known as a land of journeymen, don't break our business flow and stuff like that. And then someone else got involved and they wanted to put me, close me down, and, really? and yet try to obstruct British's success. But you know what? And these were Latvian. We've done it. And there people. you go. The world champion, Chris Away, WBC champion of the world, right there. You know that. Well, that's a, that's a bit done. of a shame. Surely yeah. the people in this country would want to get behind. Yeah, man. The phenomena, this Latvian phenomena of Maris Bradis. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a fully blown champion, isn't he? He's been for from the Hux fight. So, yeah, he's a massive star, eliminated by the government, by the president last night. Incredible. He's, he's a big celebrity. Yeah, that's celebrity. so. He, for people who don't know watching this in England, um, Maris Bradis received the highest honour you can receive as a Latvian. As a Latvian citizen, as, yeah. as a civilian. So that, that would be similar to a knighthood? Yeah, knighthood, exactly. Wow. I just want to say something as well. When um, when Bridges won the world title, the first article that appeared in Latvian newspapers, it wasn't about congratulations, sensation, blah, blah, blah. It was like this. I wonder how much in tax Bridges will have to pay for his purse. I find it disgusting, and listen to me please, the tax people of Latvia, you need to give this guy every single credit and you need to eliminate any tax. This guy got five children and he's risking his life for the pride of your nation. 
for the pride of your nation, do you understand me? So please don't be like this. Honor this guy. I'm begging you. But this guy we're talking about is also a police captain. Exactly. Or former police, police captain, yeah. so it kind of doesn't make uh, a lot of sense. It you... doesn't make any sense, but that's what it is, man. That's what I heard, and I was disgusted. I was disgusted, I'll be honest with you. I mean, this guy, he put Latvia on the map. Look what's happening. Do you think this is down to these, these issues? Do you think this is down to inexperience no, from no, the no. people I, in Latvia? No, no, no. I think, I, I think, I don't want to get political, but I think Latvia is a beautiful country. Yeah. They got lovely food. They got great yes, infrastructure. Yes, we really, yeah, yeah. Great. It's a beautiful holiday resort. Yeah. It's a beautiful, clean country. It's but an amazing I think city. Yeah. athletes like Bredis deserve respect and honoring in every single level, from financial to spiritual. That's all I'm saying. Thank you very much in advance, by the way.